Hey everyone, and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey, and today we're going to talk all about setting up Artemis, Apollo, Moonlight, Sunshine, so that you can play your games remotely streamed from your actual computer. So let's just pretend that I'm here playing Moonlight or Artemis, whatever, and I am at McDonald's, I am in a hotel, I'm, I'm not home, just, just put me somewhere else right now. We're going to show, or I'm going to show, how you can set that all up so that you can remotely stream to your device and have the best experience. So I already did a full guide on how to set up Apollo and Artemis for in-home streaming. And since Artemis is only on Android right now, you have to use Moonlight as of right now for Windows PCs or Linux devices and so on. So basically any device that isn't Android where you would install Artemis, you have to still install Moonlight. But Apollo is still the right choice for your actual gaming PC that you're gonna stream from. So if you're here seeing this video and you haven't set up Apollo or Artemis or Moonlight or any of that, Check the link in my description to follow the first video. Otherwise, none of this is going to make sense to you. Now, today's guide comes with a little bit of a disclaimer. In my first video where we set up in-home streaming, where you are at home playing from your computer to your device, your internet service provider speeds did not matter. It doesn't matter if you have gigabit fiber. It doesn't matter if you have 25 megabytes per second cable. It doesn't matter if you have dial-up. None of that mattered. Only part that mattered is how your internal network was set up. How far are you from the router? How, how much is your router doing on a throughput to your device? All that sort of thing. For today and remote streaming, when we are talking about outside of your house, your internet service provider absolutely does matter. People that have fiber connections, people that have good upload speed, you are going to be able to take advantage of this in a way that others aren't. Because when you are away from home, the upload speed matters quite a bit. And as well, the download speed of where you are. So in this scenario, actual internet speeds do matter. So keep that in mind that you might not have a good experience if you are somewhere in the middle of nowhere with no internet, all that sort of thing. Okay, all of those disclaimers out of the way, let's talk about how to actually set this up. The first option is the easiest, but it is the less secure way. And you can just enable UPnP in Apollo settings, and that will let your router forward your ports that you need. And you don't really need to do anything else besides reboot your PC and have it all work. So for this, you can just go into Apollo, head to configuration, network, and you should see UPnP as the first setting and you have to enable it. Make sure you save and apply and then do a restart of all of your devices and then try and connect remotely from Artemis or Moonlight to your PC and see if it works. Remember again, remotely means you are not on your home network. So if you wanna easily just quickly test, then use your phone as a hotspot, connect to that and see if it works. Now, if this works for you, that's great, it is not a totally recommended way because of the port forwarding and security reasons, but this is one of those things where most people wouldn't care and would be able to live with this. So if it works, then go with it. However, this solution did not work for myself and likely won't work for a lot of people. So we need an alternative and the alternative is setting up a VPN or basically a, a secure network right to your PC from anywhere in the world. This is how I personally do it. Now, obviously some setup is needed. This is a bit more involved than just clicking a little checkbox. So we're gonna go ahead and go to the tail scale website and you're gonna download it for your operating system and then install it. We are doing all of this on your actual PC that you stream from. So wherever you have Apollo installed, that's where you wanna start. Tail scale is a VPN. It basically means a virtual private network and it is a program that you can use to set up a secure network between a remote device and your PC, or basically between two devices. Open it and sign into your network. And I personally use my Google account here for ease of use and then click connect to connect. Now you want to hop onto the device that you usually stream to, and you need to install Tailscale there as well. For Android, it is pretty simple. It is right on the Google Play Store and you can install it right there. But for other operating systems like Windows or Linux devices, it is the same tail scale download page. And then you follow the instructions of logging in and connecting. It is all the same part. 
So at this point, you should have your PC connected to Tailscale and you should have one device connected to Tailscale. We are ready to move on. Head back to your PC where you have Apollo installed and find the Tailscale icon in your system tray. Right click, go to your account and then choose admin console. There actually might be another way to get to this page, but this is the way that I've always used. Now on this page, you're going to see your machine or PC that has Apollo installed, and you're going to see some IP addresses. Make note of that IP address. That is the one we need for your PC. Now go ahead and grab the device that you stream to. So the other device that you're going to bring with you remotely. And with Tailscale open and connected from before, you want to open Artemis or Moonlight, whatever you have installed, click add new to add a new PC, and then type in that IP address that we just made note of from your PC on that Tailscale page. This actually won't add a new PC, so don't worry about that, but it is going to add to your existing PC. So now you can connect both locally and remotely without changing anything. You should now be able to just connect as normal and stream. But let me explain how it works. The basic idea is when you connect to Tailscale on your device, you are opening a direct connection to your computer and fooling the network into thinking that you are right at home. But you aren't, and this is secure. So you always need to connect to Tailscale when you want to do this, which you can connect and disconnect easily in the Tailscale app if it's Android and so on. So the basic process is connect to Tailscale, open Artemis or Moonlight, click your PC and stream. When you're done, feel free to disconnect from Tailscale if you want, and off you go. Pretty simple, easy, and secure. Now, if something goes wrong with these steps outside of maybe you skipped a part and all that sort of thing, I won't be the best person to ask. Tailscale might be finicky for some people, so you'll want to fix that on their end. I'm asking me won't really help you. So you're going to have to troubleshoot with Tailscale because that's the program we're using. But otherwise, if you have it all set up properly, it all just works. Now with this change, you may need to make adjustments to the bit rate that you had applied in Artemis or Moonlight as well. Especially if, let's say at home, you were streaming at something like 150 megabytes per second or whatever. But when you're remote, you might not have as good a connection. So you may need to lower that when you are out remotely. So just keep that in mind. The other part with this is, of course, with remote streaming, you're going to see some added latency, some added delay and all of that sort of thing. Personally, I've seen that on really good internet connections, it has been very minimal, but that's obviously not always going to be the case depending on where you are. Otherwise, enjoy streaming from anywhere out in the world. The one part of this that is a big rabbit hole that I'm not going to mention and not go into because even I don't have it set up properly, remotely turning on your PC. If you could figure out a way to remotely turn on your PC, that's going to probably solve a problem that you're thinking of right now of do I have to keep my PC on the entire time? The answer is unless you have a way to turn on your PC when you're not at home, then yes. And this is different than Wake on LAN that I talked about in the last video where if you're in your own home network, it is very easy to remotely turn on your PC. But if you are remote, if you are not at home, it is a lot more difficult. It involves something like a dynamic DNS to set it up opening ports, all this sort of thing. I have done it once in my life and I don't know if I'll ever do it again, but it is not actually easy. So if you want to go down that rabbit hole, that is an entirely different thing than this guide remotely waking up your computer or turning on your computer. So you may want to look into that, but otherwise you'll just have to keep your computer on if you're away from home. So hopefully that helps. Hope this guide helped you. Happy streaming. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow. Come join me on the Discord to talk all about streaming and handhelds, because that's what I talk about. Support me on Patreon if you like my stuff. And hope you all have a good one.